Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Plane's Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Today, we're going to talk about carburetors. This is one method that works. Let's talk a little bit about what you find when you look at the bottom of your engine, where the air and the fuel come together and go into your power plant. You're going to find two different kinds of systems, either fuel injection or carburation. Today, we're going to cover carburetors. Here we have two examples of common carburetors that you're going to find on your Lycoming or Continental engine. Uh, they look a little different, but they're the, basically the same thing, and they're very, very simple carburetors. Essentially, you have a throttle plate, which, allows, uh, which determines how much air is going into the engine, and then you've got a float bowl, which has a reservoir of fuel, a little float, and a needle valve so that you always have the same amount of, of uh, fuel pressure so that when the Venturi effect, the air flowing up through this carburetor, is throttled by the air, you'll get a certain amount of fuel to mix with that air. Um, that's all a carburetor does is atomizes that fuel, and puts it into the air, and then allows the engine to suck it in. If you've never actually measured the amount of suction you get from a power plant, it's impressive. You can really, really get a lot of suction. This is a very modern uh, carburetor with, a, with new kind of machining techniques. This is what you're probably going to find uh, hanging underneath your engine. Uh, you'll notice that this one's a little bit larger. You'll find that on an 0360, and this one's a little bit smaller. You're going to find that on an 0320. So a couple of common features you're going to find on any of the carburetors. First off, you're going to find a mixture lever, and then you're going to have a throttle lever. The throttle is going to be easy to determine because you just it's moving that throttle plate. The other lever, lever you're going to find will then be the mixture. Um, something else you might find that you see on this particular carb that you don't see on this one is the accelerator pump. So on the opposite end of the, thr of the throttle shaft, with the, uh, this, this end has the, uh, the attachment point for your control cables, this end is going to be attached to this little pump. And that's the accelerator pump, which gives you an extra burst of fuel when you add power. The mixture lever back here is going to have a stop, and that's going to be important when you're doing inspection. So the, the stop is going to hit on full lean or on full rich, and you always want to make sure that you can move that uh, with your control from the cockpit to, to, to uh, the point where it contacts the, the housing on both ends. On the back of the carburetor, you're going to find the idle mixture screw. This is what's going to determine how well the engine runs at idle and you'll be adjusting that to get um, the easiest way to adjust it is so that when you shut off the engine, when you pull the mixture, you sh should get about a 50 RPM rise and then it drops off. If you don't get that little rise and then drop, then you're going to have to adjust that screw a little bit. That's just idle mixture. The other adjustment you're going to find will be idle speed and that's going to be right here. It's really nothing more than a screw which controls how far back the, uh, the throttle lever can go. And you'll adjust that a little bit with a screwdriver in order to, uh, to set the idle speed. Those are your basic two adjustments on these type of carburetors. Let's go back to that idle mixture setting just a little bit. If you get too much of a rise when you pull it, the airplane's a little bit rich. And you're going to have to take and you're going to have to lean that out a little bit. If it's the opposite, if you don't get any rise, it's a little bit lean and you're going to have to richen it up a little bit. Now, the tricky thing about idle mixture adjustment is that every time you change the mixture a little bit, you're going to change the idle speed a little bit and vice versa. So you're going to have to fine tune those together in order to get the exact right combination. The other thing to remember is that I don't particularly like to do all of this with that big propeller spinning out in front. So you end up starting the engine, seeing what it does, stopping the engine, making an adjustment, starting it up again. It's a tedious process, but it's worth doing when you're trying to set your engine up properly. Now I want to show you one other important feature on the carburetor that a lot of people don't know about, and that is the fuel filter. There's actually going to be a fuel filter or a gas escalator on your airframe, but the carburetor itself has the last chance filter as part of the filter. So this is where the fuel comes into this carburetor. You can see it here on this carburetor. There's, a, there's an elbow and it'll come in here. Um, but if you unscrew this fitting here, you'll find the little finger filter and that's the, the last chance filter to catch everything before it goes into the carburetor and clogs the jet. Now, it's on this newer type, uh, smaller carburetor, it's right there under the, the inlet. 
On this one, it's on the opposite side. You bend these tabs, you pull this, and the, the little finger filter will be in there. The disadvantage with this is that you actually have to disturb your fuel line when you're doing that, when you're taking it off. With this one, you don't. Now let's talk a little bit about inspecting your, carbu your carburetor in situ, actually mounted on the engine, because that's what you're going to do every time you take the cowling off. You want to take a quick look at things. First thing to do is make sure that there aren't any leaks. Make sure that everything's tight. You don't have any fuel dripping or leaking from any of these fittings. Next thing to do is make sure that all of the control cables are attached properly. You're, I don't have it here, but you'll, you'll check and make sure that the bolts are tight, that you've got cotter pins in place, that the... Um, that the, the heim joints, if, they've got, if you've got them, are all in good shape. Make, just give everything a little bit of a wiggle. And while you're wiggling things, wiggle the shaft not only fore and back, but up and down, just to make sure that the shaft itself is not developing some wear. And do the same thing here on the throttle. It's a good idea to grab the throttle uh, shaft on both sides and give it a little wiggle back and forth to make sure you don't hear any clicking noises. If you're hearing a click, the, the bushings in there are worn out and you're probably going to be leaking air past that and that's going to be a, a, a as a consequence you're going to have poor running so these are all things to look for make sure that you check that these bolts that hold the top of the carburetor to the bottom of the carburetor are still secure and tight it doesn't hurt to put a little screwdriver on it and just give it a little bit of a twist to make sure that they don't move it is it is not unknown for somehow this to loosen up, even with the keepers on it, loosen up just a little bit and a little bit of a gap appears in this plot. You won't see it, but you'll feel the looseness and, um, and you won't be able to shut the engine off because when you pull the idle mixture, you'll be drawing air through that gap and it'll want to keep running on on you. The last thing you want to do is check the attachment of your airbox. Now, it's very, very rare when you're going to find an airplane that's just sitting here with a carburetor hanging on and no airbox. As a matter of fact, that's a bad thing. You don't have any filtration. Anything could get sucked up in there and it'll go straight through into the engine. So you'll generally have some sort of an airbox, either metal or fiberglass, which attaches to the bottom of the carburetor. Um, this one is really designed to go on something this size. And you're going to want to do a couple things. First off, make sure that the, that the, that the airbox is, is firmly attached. It's not loose that it's not cracked. Look all over it for cracks and you get those on fiberglass ones as well. With this particular air box you're going to have a filter that mounts to the front. You want to make sure that that's firmly attached and it's not loose and of course you want to check if it's time to change your filter. Either change or clean your filter depending upon the type of filter you have. Also take the filter off and take a look at this little motion in here. This is the carb heat lever and you want to make sure that 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 when you um, open and close the carb heat or put it on or off that it fully moves and travel that 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 this will fully close up here and now we're getting um, uh, hot air to the carburetor rather than or to the engine rather than cold air like this so you want to make sure that that air box is in good shape they are the bottom chain in this assembly of vibrating parts of the motor, the carburetor, and the airbox. And so airboxes wear out. They break. They crack. They're probably the most abused part of any airplane other than the landing gear. Now let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting your carburetion. Really only two things can happen with carburetion and, and the result of bad carburetion. And that is that the engine is going to be too rich or it's going to be too lean. Um, at least if it's if it's coming from the carburetor. Now, you can have mixture distribution problems within the engine that are giving one or more cylinders that are too rich or too lean, but 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 generally that's a design factor. So we're going to talk about about uh, what you can check in the carburetor itself. How do I tell if I'm running too rich or too lean? Well, if it's too rich, uh, it's going to bog a little bit when you put in power and it's going to smoke and people are going to say, I didn't know you had a smoke system on that airplane as you fly by, in which case it's time to see if you're running too rich. Um, if it's too lean, you're more likely to have rough running. Now, how do I tell that from an ignition rough running? You check out the ignition system. Make sure that that's in good shape. Once you've done that, come back to carburation. Um, one thing that people talk about all the time is that if you try, are trying to run your engine very, very lean, lean of peak, uh, they say you can't do that with a carburetor. Well, you can and people do it. Um, the reason you have problems running lean of peak with a carburetor is that that you don't have good mixture distribution, you don't have, you don't have good um, 
uh, even distribution going to all four cylinders or all six cylinders at one time. One thing you can do to help that, if you're trying to run lean of peak, is to pull the throttle just a little bit off the stop. So instead of being wide open like this, you pull it back just a little bit. When you do that, you, you trip the plate. You end, up, you end up creating a more turbulent flow going into the engine, and that turbulent flow mixes better and gives a more even mixture distribution to all four cylinders. Now, I agree with a lot of people that sometimes some engines just don't want to run lean a peak. What's going to cause you to run lean or rich from the, from the uh, carburetor itself? First, if you're idling poorly, you want to check that idle mixture adjustment as we talked about. Um, the next thing you can think about is, is, is internal to the carburetor, and that's kind of beyond where we want to go here. If you've determined that, that, that you don't have any leaks for the carburetor, or any leaks on your induction system, which we talked about before, you want to look for, for blue stains on those uh, induction uh, tubes. If you don't have any external problems, then the problem is going to be inside here, and it could be a stuck float, a stuck needle valve, or a leaking float. Um, the history of aviation carburetors are such that there have been different kind of floats built um, out of different materials. Um, uh, brass floats, plastic floats, styrofoam floats. Now, the current is a blue plastic float, which actually can't really leak at all. Um, and so that's what you want to look for. But it's really beyond the scope of our discussion here to get you inside the carburetor. Once you've checked for external leaks, once you've checked for your mixture setting, Pretty much you're, you're talking about taking the carburetor off and finding a mechanic or a shop that can take a good look at it for you. So we've talked a little bit about running lean, but how, about, how does it get running rich? Well, it's pretty hard to get one of these things running rich unless it's a float problem, which you're going to have taken care of by a shop. But it might not be the carburetor. If you have a priming system installed on your aircraft, it's very, very common if a person just has a rich running engine that you've got a leak in that primer plunger and the, and the engine might be drawing fuel through the priming system because of that tremendous suction we talked about. A lot of times someone will be having a rich running engine, they have them go through the carburetor a couple of times and it turns out that it's a leaking primer. So think about that as well. So there you have it, the lowly carburetor. These things go back to the 1920s, 1930s. They're really simple devices, but they're part of a complete ecosystem on your engine, Com coupled with primers, induction systems, and ignition systems. There are a lot of different things that might cause your engine to run a little bit less than you like. So take a look at everything, and, and if you have a problem that you, that you just can't fix within the carburetor, send it into a shop they'll take care of it. So thanks for watching. Thanks to Tempest for sponsoring this series, and we'll see you next time on Kit Planes Firewall Forward. Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Firewall Forward. Hi, I'm Paul Dye. <laughs> it's the hardest part of the video. I know it is, I know it is. You can just use it for something else. I've been tempted. Yeah. I can't do one more any better than that.